Hello guys and welcome back to a new episode of Tracking Europe. This time an interview and insights of the fascinating instrument Hurdy Gurdy with musician, composer, filmmaker Quentin Buckworth. Hey Quentin. I visited him at home in Yorkshire, which was also our last destination in the UK before returning into the EU again. We left the UK and went to Brussels to pick up Lily, which we missed a lot. But now Quentin will lead us inside the fascinating world of Hurdy Gurdy. Enjoy. So it's a wheel violin. The wheel bow has rosin on it and it's bowing the strings continuously. It's a continual or drone instrument. Boudon. So that's like the just the, the highest melody string. And it's kind of its origins are on the um, Pilgrim's Route, the Santa at uh, Santa Maria de Compostela. A lot of people think it's from medieval Spain, around the 11th century, something like that. Uh, and a mixture of like Spanish, Moorish, and Jewish intelligence, technologies, and sensibilities to create it. That's the kind of received wisdom. Though that's you know subject to debate. Some people say it's got a, a more Middle Eastern thing but there are no there's no through line there of the development whereas there's a very clear starting point uh, in Spain so that's up for discussion but I mean like Hurdy Gurdy's played all over the world uh, um, so the diaspora is like global now but the, the, the centers of playing the hubs uh, Spain France um, and like Norway, Sweden, that kind of spread. So there's also like Ukrainian hurdy gurdies um, and you know Hungarian, Czechoslovakian. But this is a French one, this is an old French one. And I've been playing this particular instrument for about 30 years. <laughs> so it's kind of like it's like a friend, really. Uh, on the L, which is like with a solo suite, sounds like that. But then you can have a fuller sound with the octave, which cuts more, cuts through more. Then with the board on, and then it has this really odd thing that, that there's some other board ons as well. There's like a really low one. That's it, it's a loop back, so it's like the shape of a lute. It's a very traditional kind of French instrument. Um, 18th century, they, the lute went out of fashion. A lot of people think the first hurdy gurdies were made from old lutes, and so it's called a loop back. You no, know, it's um, fully chromatic. So if we go back to like the single string. But the way that you kind of, the, a lot of the tunes are written, it's like modal music. So a lot of the tunes are written within modes and so aren't kind of following some of the conventions of like Western tonal music. So you, you notate the top line, the melodic line, and then you, um, there's also like a system where you can notate all the buzzes and all that, but I tend to be a bit freer than. A lot of the tunes do this thing where they, they do the parallel major minor thing. So there'll be like a major element to a tune, then a minor, or it will just stay like modal, but it will run the parallel. So it will go from like D major to D minor or G major to G minor and flip between the two. You get it loads in French music. But a lot of the modern Gurdy players, it tends to be written, but they like the minor stuff. In terms of your development as a player, one of the most rewarding, because it's not saying 
do this technique, do this thing, it's just like getting in your head and, mm -hmm. and the insights that people have from it. It's really, I, I mean, when I was doing it, I'd been playing for 30 years and stuff came up in the interviews that I, it never occurred to me, oh, that's a really, that's a really clever way of thinking about it or that's a really unusual take. So.